Well, hello, I'm Pastor Steve, and I uh, just want to touch base with you on this Good Friday afternoon. Uh, getting ready to have a cup of tea. I'm normally a coffee drinker, but I'm uh, working on some healthier habits. And uh, if you've ever had a cup of tea, if you got a minute and want to share a cup of tea with me, uh, I'd like to share some thoughts with you related to Good Friday. And uh, I found our own church here, but I've got some green tea, some wild raspberry tea, and a pink bag here, lemon ginger tea. I've got uh, chai spice tea, one of my favorites. Oh, we've got aged Earl Grey. We've got some jasmine green tea. Uh, and so a variety of, of tea here. And one of the interesting things, I think I'm going to go with some... Uh, some chai, spiced chai tea. And one of the interesting things about tea bags, uh, I find that they relate quite a bit to you and me. And at least in a few ways. One is that they are very um, diverse and unique. We've got all these different expressions, different styles, different flavors, different colors. And uh, just like you and I, we come in a, in a diverse and unique expressions. We come with our own personalities and attitudes and gifts and in appearances and looks and styles. Uh, but with that, I also find that uh, on the inside, we all are, are kind of similar in that we, we all, to the best of our ability, want to, to look like we've got life together. Uh, at least in the Bible, the, the representation of being robed in white, clothed in white, tends to be the illustration of purity, holiness, of having our act together. And uh, on the inside, we like to look that way, put together, neatly packaged, organized, uh, nicely arranged, uh, and, and clean. We like to have that appearance on the inside, but the the reality is, is that inside of there is what? Some, some dark things. <laughs> There's some junk going on on the inside of our life. And we prefer to keep it hidden. We prefer to keep it uh, out of sight. We prefer to keep it buried between this facade of being white, clean, organized, put together, pure, and basically have our act together. Also... Uh, common to most tea bags are this this string with a little tag, and uh, that has some purpose when you're drinking tea. But for for us, it also kind of reflects the fact that we we often have some strings attached to our life. In other words, we're trying to represent our life as pure and holy and organized and put together. But there are things of this life pulling against us. Things like our own appetites and desires, worldliness. We could call them sins, we could call them selfishness, uh, but we have attachments to the things of this world that tend to pull on us. And uh, this leaves us with a problem. We've got uh, strings, we've got junk on the inside, and what do we do about that? Hey, I've got great news. It's Good Friday. It is the day we remember, reflect, and celebrate the victory through the cross where Jesus died for you and I. And he died so that these strings that hold us back, the Bible says when he died, he overcame death, hell, and the grave. He defeated the devil, and he severed those strings so that we can be free. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And he overcame the enemy. He overcame death, and he died so that should we choose to follow him and yield to him, we can be free uh, from those uh, strings, those temptations, those attacks. Also, Jesus not only died to set us free, but he died so that we could be forgiven, so that the, the junk on the inside of us, he was willing to take at the cross. He was perfect, pure, holy, never sinned, ever. Can you imagine that? And yet all of the junk on the inside of us was cast upon him on the cross. Isn't that unbelievable? He took our pain, he took our shame, he took our sin, he took our, our unholiness, he took our failures and our mistakes, and he uh, carried them for us to pay the price of forgiveness and left us 
truly uh, righteous before God. Now, do we still have problems? Of course we do. Do we still have struggles? Of course we do. Are we going to make mistakes? Of course we are. But the Bible says we have become the righteousness of God. In other words, Jesus took our sins and we are able to reflect his righteousness. He became sin for us so that we might become righteous in the eyes of God. Amazing. And so what used to be a feeble attempt at being clean, pure, holy, righteous has now become the true representation in God's eyes of you and I through the cross, through what we remember today on Good Friday, through the blood of Jesus. Now, the Bible goes on to say that uh, as Jesus not only died, but he rose again on the third day. Hey, I want to invite you this Sunday, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. We're going to be celebrating here at Abundant Life, 845, 1045. Join us online. Join us here in the building because we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus, the victory he brought. And then he shows himself to his disciples, to his followers, and he gives them this promise. He says, hey, I want you to wait uh, in Jerusalem. Wait because there is something more for you. The gift or the promise of the Father, something that's going to help you live an overcoming life. And it's called the Holy Spirit. He said, wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon you uh, before you go on. God wants us to live a life that's fired up and on fire for him, filled with him, his power, his spirit, his grace, his anointing. And uh, he has great plans for you. He wants you to be forgiven. He wants you to be free from those chains, those strings that hold you back. He wants you to experience the grace of his forgiveness, and he wants you to live your life on fire. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 that as they waited, according to what Jesus commanded them, after a period of time, about 10 days of prayer and just being together, it says the Holy Spirit came down. There was a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and there was something like fire that came down, and it rested right on their heads. And God wants you and I to live in the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit so that when we die, uh, we can fly up to heaven uh, and enjoy eternal life with him. Hey, can I encourage you to uh, surrender your life to the Lordship of Jesus? I'm going to catch that little tea bag. Today would be a great day on this Good Friday to give thanks to Jesus for his death on the cross, to rejoice in the victory through the resurrection, to have great anticipation uh, for the anointing and empowerment of his Holy Spirit, and to be able to have the peace to look forward to that day where we rise up to heaven and join Jesus in heaven. It starts with surrender, where you say, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to know you. I want to experience the forgiveness and the grace of God. It's a simple prayer of saying, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Jesus, I need you in my life. Today I repent for the sin I've committed and I ask for your forgiveness. Today I surrender and I choose to follow you with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my strength. In Jesus' name, amen. That simple prayer starts a journey of surrender and a journey of following Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, this Sunday, April 4th, 845 and 1045, we'll be right here at Abundant Life. We'll also be live streaming, alaog.org, and we will be on Facebook, ALA Brooklyn. We'll be on YouTube at youtube.com slash Abundant Life Brooklyn. Any of those places you can find us, we'd love to worship and celebrate with you this Sunday. Have an amazing weekend and God bless you.